three, two. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the show today. I have the pleasure of Dr. Judy Jasek online with us today, and we are going to be talking about keeping your pet healthy under a moment of crisis. And if you are saying, what's the crisis? You've been living <laughs> underneath a rock. We are under, totally. there's lockdowns, there's quarantines, there's all this uncertainty that's happening. And guess what? Your pet is right in the middle of it all. So Dr. Judy Jasek and I are going to talk about that today, how to keep your pet healthy and how to avoid any types of panic when it comes to, let's say something happens to your dog. And Dr. Judy Jasek, at the end of this, if you stick with us, is, is going to be offering um, a very affordable $35 consultation, 15 minutes online, where you can determine whether or not you need to go see a vet right away, or is this something that is there a home remedy that you can incorporate into it? So Dr. Judy, thank you so much for being on the, uh, being on the Facebook Live today, and I am so Honored to have you on the show and so pleased to be doing this with you now on Tuesdays at noon. All right. Thank you, Matt. I'm, I'm happy to be here. And wow, hasn't life changed? We did this a week ago and I'm thinking our, our lives are completely different in the last week. And I think they're, like I was saying before, I really think our lives are forever changed. I, I think we're never going to go back to the normal that, that we knew before. Um, so we have to learn to be innovative. You know, we have yeah. to accept change. It's happening. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we have to, you know, look at where we're at and, um, make decisions that keep our families safe and healthy. And that includes our pets. So I've been trying mm -hmm. to think of ways to help people do that. Um, I closed my in-person practice out of my home because I, I want to stay healthy. I want to keep um, my home um, from not getting contaminated, you know, so I can do phone and, uh, you know, Zoom consults. Um, you know, I leave, people want to come pick up supplies. I leave them outside my front door. They leave a check under the mat. And, you know, we just, you know, you make, you make, um, you make adjustments. And, uh, right. and, and I think there are, there are a lot of things we can do. And it's, you know, you mentioned panicking when, when you panic um, and, and all of us are susceptible to this, when things are so new and so uncertain, we panic and we panic, we don't think clearly. So, um, and I see a lot of times people, you know, their, their pet does something unusual and they run them into the vet and that's not a bad thing, but that option may be going away. You know, we're, mm -hmm. we're getting shut down more and more and more. So clinics could actually be closing um, or people just don't want to risk um, the exposure. But I can, you know, I can, I'm offering this $35 consult because I can discern a lot because I've been doing this for over 30 years. So I can listen to the scenario, listen to the symptoms, um, determine if, if we have a true emergency, or if maybe we can treat with some home remedies. Um, this is the great thing about natural medicine and herbal medicine. I would say the majority of people have things on their, um, in their spice cabinet or, you know, other things they have around the home that they could use to um, treat some simple ailments in their pets. Um, I can help guide people in what to look for and how to discern if uh, things are a, a true emergency. Right. So with that, with everything going on, is there things that you did, Dr. Judy, to prepare? Because you, we had talked about you are definitely a preparer and you want to make sure. So when you first saw that this potentially could go uh, this direction, you prepared. So what did you prepare for? for well, yeah, the first thing I did was when all this started happening in China, I mm -hmm. thought, ooh, we could have a big supply chain disruption because, yeah. we could, uh, you know, almost everything manufactured, some part of it come from China. So nice. the first thing I did was stock up on supplies for mm -hmm. my business. Now, I'm not currently seeing clients, but, you know, th that this if there is a supply chain disruption that could go on for 
quite some time. And then when I do reopen and start seeing clients again, I know that I will be uh, prepared to see them. And if there, you know, I look at it like if there is no supply chain disruption, well, I just stocked up for a couple months. It's it's stuff (laughs) that I'm going to use anyway. Um, Mm -hmm. And for my own personal pets, um, yeah, stocked up on some food. I actually recently bought a a second freezer because I wanted to have some uh, raw food available to sell to clients when they're in. Mm -hmm. So um, I was, I had that available space. And so, yeah, I bought some extra food for my pets, you know, chihuahuas, as you know, Matt, chihuahuas <laughs> don't eat a whole lot. <laughs> they do, but yeah. I mean, definitely when you're stocking up, and I love that you did it for your clients as well, because when you look at that, if there is that moment of panic and mm-hmm. your client has run out of food, a good raw food, yeah. So if they run out of food, what do you do? Well, um, you know, that's, that's tricky. I mean, I, I could definitely help people, um, you know, put together some meals for their pets based on what they do have in their household. I mean, right. hopefully people have stocked up enough that they have some, some reserves for their family. And mm-hmm. so we may need to put some meals together that are not quote unquote, uh, ideal. Mm-hmm. Um, if you still have, have time to stock up buy you know, buy some extra food. You know, I'm a huge proponent of raw food. Um, I don't advocate feeding kibble, but you know what? Maybe pick up a bag of kibble and just stick it in the garage. And if, you know, this just goes on longer than we're anticipating and you run out of your fresh food, you have something to feed your, your, your pet. If we get, we don't know where this is going. And if we get to um, more survival, then you want to keep your pet alive, you know, we're looking right. at, at, um, survival and, you know, kibble keeps, and it's not like something you want to keep your pet on forever. However, when we're talking about surviving, your pet will survive on it mm-hmm. for a while. And then as soon as possible, go back to your fresh food diets. But, um, I know I, I heard from Didi from, you know, raw dog food and company, and she said some of their suppliers are starting to shut down. So wow. um, if you have the opportunity, if you do buy fresh or, you know, frozen food, um, get stocked up because that'll be an industry-wide disruption. All the raw food, um, you know, providers are going to be going down the same road. So if you have the storage yeah. space and, uh, you know, can get some fresh food, if you feed raw we're stuck up on cans, stuck up on kibble, um, mm-hmm. because I think we could have a real delay. Once the, the supply chain is disrupted, it could stay disrupted, yeah. you know, for, for a while. And through my, you know, um, consults I'm offering, like I said, if you just get in a bind, um, I can help you put together, you know, something to feed your pet with, with what you have. We're not worried about right. ideal nutrition, maybe for a couple of weeks. Um, we just want to, you know, keep your fed going with, with, uh, some reasonable meals. Yeah. It's not a forever, it's a temporary type thing in effects, but you had mentioned a great point. Yeah. Supply chains are going to get disrupted. So make sure that you are getting enough dog food, um, in your home so that your pet can last at least the next four weeks on just the back stock and everything is going in. So this is canned food is preferably better than dry Mm -hmm. kibble. But if you have to go dry kibble, I'm gonna take a big deep breath. I thought I'd never ever say this. I know, (laughs) know. like, you know, it is, it's one of those necessities, but for yourself and you know, when you look at a good diet, I mean, as it was taught to be my my mentor as I was going through all my certification for raw feeding is, it was taught to me it very simply, if your dog was wild, it would catch a rabbit in the field and eat the rabbit. So then designing a meal that somewhat mimics that someone philosophy. So you're talking about organ meat, which I, I think even under a moment of crisis and, and individuals buying all the food, I think you're going to be able to find organ meat. <laughs> it's so, going to be the last thing to go. The, the liver is going to be there. 
going to eat. So think of like a variety mix of organ meats. Think of what's in that rabbit. You're thinking about um, meat. So really the diet should be about 80% muscle meat. So you can get away with giving some ground beef or giving some chicken in that type of you know standpoint. And so, and then the other one that's going to be more difficult is bone because you want to get that calcium into it, but you can make a eggshell powder mm -hmm. that is calcium rich. And so really there are all these little tricks that you can do in thinking outside the box, but thinking about more on how you feed yourself, knowing that your dog needs muscle meat, bone, and organ. And like I said, it's a temporary thing. It's not forever. So then when supply chain starts coming back on, you can be resupply, but take care of it now so that your dog doesn't have to go through that moment or you don't have to go through that mm -hmm. stress of what am I going to feed them today? Yeah. Because, and even like the um, canned meats on the human side, canned yeah. chicken, you know, tuna is really controversial because of yeah, mercury content, but if you're not mm -hmm. feeding it every day, you can probably get away with it. I mean, it's not yeah. something I'd normally recommend, but you know, if you can work a can or two in, at least getting some nutritional mm -hmm. value, um, you know, canned salmon, you know, stock up on some of these things because that's a great um, meat source that will yeah. last and actually is probably, um, you know, healthier than the commercial, you know, pet canned foods. Um, you know, some, some of, some of that stuff out there. Yeah. And there's, you know, from all that type of stuff. So, you know, and another point that Dr. Junie and I were talking about was exercise. I mean, mm -hmm. we think under a moment like this, we're kind of somewhat being contained in our homes. There's nothing wrong with going, taking your dog out for a walk. And it gets you outside, it gets them outside, it gets that stir crazy, maybe limits the level just a little bit, but there's social distancing. It's not like I'm walking, you know, within a foot to the, guy, the, the, to the individual in front of me when I go walk. I'm walking with space and I'm walking with mm -hmm. that. So that whole social distancing perspective still applies, but going out for a walk and exercising, I think is going to be pivotal during this time too, just for your own mental health and also your pet's health. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's important for your pets to de-stress de too. You know, they pick up on mm -hmm. our energy and when you're nervous, you're worried, you know, the whole routine is changed. You know, pets are creatures of habit. They know the yeah. routine and now all of a sudden the whole family's home, the whole family isn't used to being together. You know, that's, that could be stressful in and of itself. Everybody's on top of each other all of a yeah. sudden. You're not going out uh -huh. doing your, your normal things, right? So right. there could be some extra tensions and, um, you know, getting outside, you know, letting your pets love this time of year because there are so many new smells, mm -hmm. get out and enjoy the um you know, the springtime, take some deep breaths. Um, we're fortunate yeah. in Colorado because we have a lot of open space. If you're living in the we middle do. of New York City, I mean, probably finding um, a place where you could go walk with uh, proper social distancing is probably a little more, <laughs> a little more challenging. But we're, you know, we're lucky um, here in in Colorado uh, that you that you can do that. And yeah, I think that is that is super. <clears throat> you know super important and um you know to, you to take care of take care of yourself take time to mm -hmm. just sit back and take some deep breaths and eat well yeah. yourself um as as best you can absolutely and then you know that plays right into the last element that i was talking to dr judy about which is love i mean mm -hmm. love it can be expressed with a belly scratch an ear scratch you getting on the floor with your pet and reconnecting and really it's it's selfish on some level for me because I know it's helping me as much mm -hmm. as it's helping my pet. That yeah. at some point, yeah, if I need to recharge, getting down on the floor with Mr. Chacha or Leo and really just having a moment, they may not realize it, but really it calms myself and resets. As, as long as Mr. Chacha doesn't bite you in the process, right? <laughs> Dude, hey, I worry about your dog, Dr. Judy. Your dog is like a vicious. But yes, Mr. Chacha will bite me as long as Jamie is not in the house. But since we're all working out of here, that's an inevitability. So yeah, I'm probably going to get bit. Right. Yeah. But yeah. you know, Still, still nice. You get you need a little, you need a little, need a little fur therapy, right? <laughs> that that's right. So think of it, you know, a little fur therapy is in there. Is 
really coming back to center and slowing down again. And so thinking about so there that panic does not ensue. And panic doesn't have to mean what we think is panic as being, you know, running around, really worried about things. It can be very minor. It can be just anxiety. It can be worry. It can be the unknown that sits out in front of us. And you hit it on the head, Dr. Judy. Our pets pick up on this. Our pets experience everything that we feel. And so if we're excited, they're excited. If we're sad, they're sad. And so really it gives us that opportunity to reconnect with them and re become re-centered for ourselves as well. Because when we are calm in those moments. So for example, it's Dr. Judy, you are gonna offer this consultation that if there's a moment that happens, I think we are gonna see a shift in the medical profession from mm -hmm. a more of a telemedicine approach is we have the ability. I mean, you guys are watching us on Facebook Live right now. What keeps Dr. Judy from engaging with you via Zoom and looking at your pet and looking at all this mm -hmm. because of her 30 years of experience, she's got that ability to take a look at that. And I think we're gonna be looking at a slowdown in jumping in the car and going to the vet for specific ailments and practices, I think, you know, certain clinics may start adopting a full telemedicine approach to their practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, another thing I just thought of on the preparedness part is along with food, if you do regularly give your pets any supplements, herbs, or even mm -hmm. medications, like you don't want to run out of medications that your pet is used to getting, um, and all of a sudden, you know, have to drop them off cold turkey because you can't get them anymore. And there, yeah. that's another supply chain issue. Um, a lot of our medications or some of the, the parts in, uh, that are used in or ingredients in the processing of medications, pharmaceuticals, and some herbs mm -hmm. uh, come from China. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that's, you know, I think that's important if you can get get stocked up, go get an extra prescription before your veterinarian mm -hmm. maybe, you know, closes or your veterinarian gets sick. What are they going to do? You know, if a right. practice owner um, comes down with COVID, they're going to stay mm -hmm. home, right? I mean, right. that's, that's going to be for a month. Mm -hmm. And if you run out of meds and then there's a supply chain issue and they may not be able to get that, um, get that stock back in so just yeah you know think ahead and be prepared think about everything you give your pet treats choose um mm -hmm. of course food is the most important thing because they need to eat but if they're on other things that you that you give them every day and that they're used to um mm -hmm. be sure to to stock up on on everything yeah absolutely so what are some good home remedies that someone can use in regards to you had mentioned in our pre-call is if there is somewhat of a stomach disturbance or an upset stomach you can give ginger yeah ginger is great ginger ginger is natural um it's a natural like anti-nausea mm -hmm. it helps mm -hmm. settle the stomach and what I would suggest is you make a simple ginger tea. If you happen to have fresh ginger root, you can use that. Mm -hmm. um, you can also, if you have the ginger powder or some other form of ginger, I mean, they do make, you know, ginger tea. If you have to have ginger tea bags, you could sure. make that too. Um, but any form of ginger that you have, pour some hot water on it, let it cool. Um, if you're using whole root or the spice, you know, strain it. And you could spoon a little bit of that into your pet. If they're still eating, you could just put a little bit in with their food, especially mm -hmm. if you're having to change their diet, you're not feeding them what yeah. they're used to eating. Ginger stimulates digestion. So it stimulates mm -hmm. um, the digestive enzymes to be produced and that helps yeah. pets uh, digest their food. It helps move food through the digestive tract mm -hmm. um, more, uh, more, efficiently. So that's probably one sure. of the best digestive aids. Um, slippery elm, this may not be something you commonly have around, but it would be something great to get if you can still get it great for, um, you know, diarrhea, any kind of lower intestinal upset. So those would be sure. two great things to have on hand um, for, you know, for tummy aches. You know, the real cool thing to remember is we don't need a lot of the 
pharmaceuticals um, that are yep. out there. Um, uh, garlic is a great mm -hmm. antibacterial. Now you don't want to give dogs a lot of garlic because it's in the the onion family, but a little right. bit, um, you know, can help. Uh, colloidal silver mm -hmm. is a fabulous um, antiviral, antibacterial, mm -hmm. oregano oil. Um, now you want to put that in capsules. You're going to give that to your pet because it's really super strong. Right. Um, that's a great thing actually to breathe a little bit of oregano oil. Just get that in your airways. Um, if you've been out and about, cause that mm -hmm. actually is a strong, um, antiviral and, and antibacterial. Um, so those yeah. are some great things that if you don't have them, and you can still get them. You can go right to the store. You can go right to you know natural grocers, Whole Foods. Mm -hmm. They are going to have um, these simple things. And then if say your pet does cut himself, has an open wound, you know your dogs get in a fight. You can't get them in. You got you have an, an um, antibacterial um, of of some sort, you know to uh, to give them. Yep, <clears throat> I've heard for cuts, honey. So like a sugar, like I use Manuka honey, but I've mm -hmm. heard you can actually go a raw based honey because of the sugar in some, um, oh, it's not physical therapist. Some uh, doctors are using this in, for wound care. Mm -hmm. So as they're putting, they're actually putting sugar into wound care based on the form of honey and then mm -hmm. managing it up because that actually is antibacterial. Yeah. I had um, my very first experience with Manuka honey, actually a client uh, asked me about it, made me aware mm -hmm. of it. This was many years ago and um, their dog had a wound on its foot. Actually, it had a broken toe and we'd mm -hmm. splinted the foot and the dog got a pressure sore from the splint, which commonly happens, mm -hmm. got really badly infected. It was actually a MRSA. So this oh, is a wow. methicillin resistant strep. So, um, or staph. So, um, and it was, it was only like one or two antibiotics that it was, we did a, a culture insensitivity and the dog could not tolerate the antibiotics. Gave the dog the antibiotics and it would vomit. It's just his gut couldn't handle I'm like crap. Like, what am I going to do? Because this thing right. is resistant to all other like common antibiotics. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the guardian said, what about this Manuka honey? I was reading about it online. But back then you had to actually order it from New Zealand. Now you can get it pretty much yeah. anywhere, but you you actually had to buy it like a case at a time from New Zealand. Oh, wasn't wasn't widely available, but she's like, I'll get it. I'm like, right. let's try it. And um, we wrapped the, the foot with the Manuka honey and she was mm -hmm. giving some early, and we took pictures within 72 hours, this wound started healing. And you could tell, because when it started it, just look, it was very discolored, stinky, mm -hmm. you know, you could tell it was infected. Right. And then after 72 hours, it started healing and we healed that wound up uh, without antibiotics. So it's, it's pretty, mm -hmm. it's pretty amazing stuff. Um, another great one is coconut oil, which a lot of people yeah. anymore um, have around. It's probably not as strong of antibacterial as something like Manuka honey, but it also is anti-inflammatory, wow. antibacterial, wow. antifungal, and um, it does help with wound healing. Yeah. No, and there, so there's a lot of different things out there, and there are some books, or if you go online and you look at it, definitely look at the source of where you're getting the information from, but there are a lot of natural remedies that you probably have in your medicine cabinet or you've got in your pantry that can help a lot of these ailments that do pop up and these accidents that happen, that we have pets, they try to jump over a fence, they get in a fight, mm -hmm. they, you know, these things do happen. But really taking a look at it and slowing down and saying, okay, has the bleeding stopped? Has, you know, what does the wound look like? Does the wound smell? I mean, there's all these types of things. Now, what are your thoughts on activated charcoal? Um, I think activated charcoal, if a pet ingests a toxin, Mm -hmm. um, activated charcoal can absorb things out of the intestinal tract or okay. it binds to them. So they're not absorbed into the body. So if your pet ingested something, uh, mm -hmm. ate chocolate or something, or some, something else, um, you know, rodent, a rodenticide or rodent, rodent poison or something mm -hmm. like that, you know, you know, there's like a chemical in there something like activated charcoal right mm -hmm. away can help bind to things in the, in the digestive tract so that the pet doesn't 
um, doesn't absorb them and is more likely to go ahead and eliminate them. So that's a great like first mm -hmm. aid thing to keep for people too. It's a great thing to have on hand. So yeah, there you go. So in your cabinet, when you're putting stuff together, activated charcoal, because you never know when they're going to break into candy in your house. If you got candy mm -hmm. in your pantry, I know Mr. Chacha did that um, about a year and a half ago. He broke into our pantry and ate um, pure cacoa powder. A oh, lot gosh. of it. Really? Yeah. <laughs> like you talk about panic when you come downstairs and you just see these, these brown lips looking back. I was going to say like, it's oh, all over his face. <laughs> Yeah. And you know, he got oh, into it, but we didn't have any activated charcoal. So we did the, the classic thing, which is threw him in the car, rush him to yeah. the bed. And that's exactly what they gave him. They gave him activated charcoal and pumped his stomach and make sure everything got out. So the toxins from the cacoa powder did not get inside of him. And so really, when you're looking at all of those things, you never know what is going to happen. And because of this time, Murphy's law is going to take into account. Mm -hmm. Anything that you don't want to happen could happen. So just being prepared in all these moments. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, and think about, you know, what you do, what, what people do when they get sick, you know, right. uh, you get a cough or cold. I mean, now, of course, we have the additional concern of coronavirus, but for the mm -hmm. most part, you have a stomach ache, you know, you ate, you know, pizza the night before, and now you got a tummy ache. What do you do? You just, you don't eat that much. You don't go running into the doctor. Usually most people I talk to don't, but I think because right. our pets can't speak to us and can't yeah. communicate with us, it's scarier because when they start to act differently, um, we don't know, um, you know, if, if it's serious or not. So let's go into the vet and find out. And there's absolutely, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, by all means, you know, take your, take your pet in and find out and it puts your mind at ease, but right. you know, that option may very well, I think actually very likely be going away. But I think just know that even if your pet is injured, um, if it gets sick, I would say the majority of things that happen can probably be managed at home because your pet's mm -hmm. body knows how to heal. And right. we can do some gentle, supportive things to help. Um, you know, if, you're, if your pet cuts a major artery and you can't stop the bleeding, I mean, there's, of course, things that can happen. But I would, again, say probably more than 90% of the things that happen can probably be managed at home. We're just not used to thinking that way. And yeah. when, when something like this happens in our culture, we need to change the way we think. And mm -hmm because there's options. And if you can slow down, try to get past the panic, take a few mm -hmm. deep breaths and say, what can, what can I do about this? Um, yeah. There's, there are things you can do. And mm -hmm. it's a matter of educating yourself and jumping in and doing things. You know what, you're going to be outside your comfort zone for months here, mm -hmm. maybe years, who knows how long the repercussions of this are are going to go on. So you need to think differently. Maybe you've yeah. never put a bandage on your pet, but by God, have some bandage material on hand. I mean, I would hope that everybody has at least a basic first aid kit and you probably want to amp that up too. get some extra yeah. bandage material, get some ACE bandages, get some tape so you can put pressure on a wound. Um, if it's, if it's bleeding, yeah. um, you know, be prepared. Maybe you never bandaged a leg before. Oh, there's probably a YouTube video if you, you know, still have internet. No, there and is. if not, you know what? Just jump right. in and do it and do the best yep. you can. You know, yep. yeah, I think people have to, you're going to have to learn to be more, more self, self-sufficient. Yep. You know, and we had done that with, you know, just classic Boy Scout stuff. I took old mm -hmm. white t-shirts of mine and tore them up into pieces and made bandages. They were a clean right. white t-shirt. Yeah. And you can make bandages about out of anything cloth. And right. really just something that compresses the wound and really somewhat gets that bleeding stopped and back under control or whatever it is. Um, what was I going to say? No, go ahead because it'll come back to me at like two o'clock. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. Um, you don't have bandage material. Mm -hmm. Probably everybody's got an old t-shirt in their mm -hmm. closet that you yep. can get into, get into strips. You know, uh, if the dog, if it's bleeding really badly, mm -hmm. put a tourniquet on the leg. I mean, that would be an absolute mm -hmm. last resort, but if you just can't stop the bleeding with pressure, just mm -hmm 
tie that on the leg um, up mm -hmm. above it and apply your pressure and see if yeah. you can you can get it to you know to stop that way. Um, you know, you could make a splint. All you need is a rigid a stick, a board. I mean, what, what do you think people did? The pioneers that traveled across the country and mm -hmm. covered wagons, you know, they didn't, right. I mean, they might've had some doctors with them, but they didn't have clinics. They didn't, you know, mm -hmm. have surgery rooms. You know, they exactly. you have to be a little, a little bit, um, a little bit innovative. Yeah. And, you know, and these doctors from a telemedicine, just like what Dr. Judy is offers, offering, they are not just waving their hands up in the air and completely leaving the profession. They're still practicing. They're still, you know, available. So really at some point too, is I think having a plan with your vet or with your personal doctor for yourself and really having a plan in regards to that, knowing that you can call them or you can actually have a conversation depending on what level of severity in, to get it addressed. And so really working on a plan with your doctor as well. Don't, you don't have mm -hmm. to go at this alone. I mean, I know you probably got into this profession, Dr. Judy, because you love animals and you love the entire veterinarian aspect of your profession. And so it's not like you're just going to wave your hands up and be like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> right. I mean, no, right. Right. You're, you're really wanting, you you have so much care and love for pets that it really at some side is, but your patients that come see you have probably worked out a plan. Hey, if this happens, or if this walks down this road, can I call you? Can I have a conversation about it? And it's not one that is under panic. Oh, my dog, you know, broke a nail, mm -hmm. you know, would not be one of those reasons. But yeah, if your dog did get in a fight and hit a major artery or something like that, it's having somebody that you can call as well as doing your own preventative or your own you know, wound care in regards to things like this. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's a great point. You know, ask your regular veterinarian or your, mm -hmm. you know, personal doctor, like if I can't come in to see you, do you have options? You know, everybody is needing to adapt and they might need a little bit of a little bit of a push because what if, I mean, you know, the way this is spreading, the chances of people inside, say a large veterinary clinic, the chances of somebody in there getting this COVID yeah. is pretty good. And then what are yep. they going to do? They really ethically have to have to shut down. If the, if the building mm -hmm. is contaminated, the practice is contaminated, everybody right. in there has been exposed. They can't continue to expose clients, you know, no. I wouldn't think, um, but ask them, can, mm -hmm. can you be available? I mean, a lot of veterinary technicians could answer a lot of, um, basic questions. I mean, they've been working right there with the, with the doctors, some of them for years. Right. And, um, you know, they don't have the DVM after their name, but they, mm -hmm. they're very knowledgeable. So maybe clinics could set up some programs where the technicians could, um, help field some questions for their, you know, for their clients so that people aren't just, you know, sitting, sitting home worried. And with the ability to send photos or take a video of what your pet's doing. Um, yeah, that can, that can help a lot. I mean, we can really discern a lot from a, a, a good history and some, some pictures and videos. Yeah. Look at all the resources that you have available to you. Not only your doctors that you have, you have the internet, which we joked a little bit about. It's probably a YouTube video on it. Well, there is. Yeah. I mean, there's so much of this from, you know, you type in, how do I cure an upset stomach for my pet? There's going to be a myriad of posts and there's going to be a myriad of articles out there that give different advice on that, but definitely know the source of where you're actually getting from and make sure it's from a trusted, but then you have a resource of a veterinarian that you can say, Hey, this is what's happening. This is what I have. Can I feed my you know, can I feed my dog this? Will this help them or hurt them inside it? So tap into all your resources. You are going to have to get creative in this day and age. You're going to have to think outside the box and there's not going to be as easy as just taking him to the vet anymore. As you know, as, and it's hard for me to say it's not as easy as taking him to the vet because getting your dog in the car and taking your animal to the vet is never easy, but it's going to be a little bit more of a challenge. It's you're going to change. You're going to think outside the box. 
but think about all the basics. Think about what you need as an individual. So if you do get a cut, what do you do to fix that cut? You don't go running into the emergency room when you get a cut. You, you actually address that wound yourself and take care of that. Well, your pet is no different. You can do a lot of that stuff as well. So in down from upset stomachs, if you have kids, you deal with colds, you deal with all this type of thing that happens. Mm -hmm. and, if, and you are automatically inclined to think outside of the box to address those specific cases. Well, your pet is no different. Think outside the box and think about what can I do right now to help either from a pain management side or what can I do to stop the bleeding or what can I do to increase their comfort level? So they are awesome, awesome animals. And like you had said, they just want to have, they want to thrive. They want a happy, healthy life. And so they're going to do things to help you promote that as well. Mm -hmm. Right. So we want to thank everybody for watching us today on the Facebook Live. And um, what I will do is in the actual comment section, I will put Dr. Judy's information um, so you can contact her if you're interested in engaging in a $35, 15-minute consultation with her and use Dr. Judy as a resource in moments like that. So is there anything else that they should know or rules that they should know in regards to engaging with you in regards to that 35 minute for $35, 15-minute consultation? Um, no, I mean, I, that's open to any, any question, um, you know, again, diet symptoms, anything that, um, you know, that, that people are concerned about. And I, and it, you know, if you want to do a more in-depth consult where you send the medical records over, you know, I do that too. I'm offering this abbreviated consult just because of, of the times where I realize I got thinking today, it's like, well, what if people get worried and they, you know, they can't take their vet in and at least mm -hmm. just to be able to get, um, you know, a professional input on, on what's going on and some things that they can help do um, to help mitigate the situation and also what things to look for. Cause in most cases I can give things, okay, if these things happen, that's serious and you really need to try to get them in. Um, yep. Other things, you know, we can probably, um, we can probably do a, a wait and see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which I think is, is paramount. So definitely I will put uh, notes in the actual show in the comment section on Facebook with all of Dr. Judy's information so that you can contact her if you are interested or just have it, have it available at your resource. It's just a resource for you in case something does happen. And so that you can keep your pet happy, healthy, and safe and thriving as they should be. So we want to thank you guys again for being a part of it. And you can always, and I do want to say, Dr. Judy has a new website that just went live. Yay. What is the URL to your new website? It is. It's so simple. I love it. Um, it's AHA. So my new uh, business name is Animal Healing Arts. Mm -hmm. And so the website is AHA vet. So AHA vet.com. And the new, awesome. the new email, uh, the business email is info at AHA vet.com. So that's how you can get a hold of me, my phone number, and Matt will post this, but my phone number is 720 515 2421. Awesome. And I will definitely post this in case you guys didn't get that written down. And you can always follow us at parsleypet.com. Um, during this time, as you are feeding your dog potentially different or you're changing their habits of what they do nutritionally, test your dog. Test what nutrients are in their body. Test whether or not they are still receiving all the right nutrients that they can have. And at the end of this period, test them to make sure you can get them back online as the world starts to shift over and yeah. starts to get back to its new normal. And let us know what your, you know, let us know what your needs are. You know, if there's things you'd, you'd love to hear us uh, talk about, topics to cover, yeah, um, specific needs. Um, you know, we're trying to think of things, but uh, definitely, definitely let us know because you know what? We need to be in this together. This is not a time, even though you have to sit in your home, with technology, we can still work together and help each other. And that's where we, where we need to be. We need to be in community, um, not just, you know, 
isolating ourselves, even though physically we, we do need to be in our homes, but through technology, um, we can still communicate and help each other figure this out. Because with different, different minds, different resources, uh, different experiences that um, so many of us can, can bring to the table, um, we can help each other through this. And I think that's gonna be really important. So well said. Thank you very much for saying that. That is, you hit it right on the head. So thank you all. Stay healthy, stay happy. So we'll talk to you guys soon. We'll see you next Tuesday at noon. All right, bye everybody.